Hi, this is Dr. Bob Hieronymus, and we have a number of wonderful things to show you today. doing astrological birth signs, but would you settle for an astrological, your astrological birth sign? Now, I tell you, what part you tell me what part of the line this is, and I draw this on here. What do you think that is? Um, Don't tell them. An ear? An ear. No, that's a good guess, but that's not it. I know what it is. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. What do you think? What part of the line is that? A tail. A tail. Congratulations. You win a free trip to Bermuda. What is that symbol that you have in there? This is for Gemini. For Gemini? You're a Gemini then? Yes. A fifth. One day after the country's birthday, well, I'll be. That's really something. The scorpion, which is a symbol for the material world, and then there's a, a snake, which is a symbol for mind. working up here in all this noise sometimes. People are always walking by and saying something. They're always talking to you. I haven't done any artwork yet up here at all. All I've been doing is acting like a house painter. When you work on any mural, that's exactly what you have to be for a while. A house painter and covering in big areas. It gets pretty frustrating. People always think you're finished. A long time ago when I wanted to paint murals, I didn't realize that there was so much boredom involved and so much physical labor involved. And anyone who has painted a large painting knows that you have to physically outlast your piece of work somehow. This piece of work probably won't take more than a week and a half more. His name is Bob Hieronymus. He is 27 years old, a native of Baltimore, where he lives in this commune called Savitria, the House of the Sun. He is a painter, teacher, writer, philosopher. He's a member of the liberal Catholic Church. He believes in symbology, astrology, extrasensory perception, reincarnation, Christianity, Judaism, the occult sciences, Atlantis, the collective unconscious, Rosicrucianism, and the United States of America. It's really quite nice to come in from the middle of the city and, and pull into Savitria where it's quiet. With one exception this time, and that's the locusts. Really quite a beautiful place here. I never thought that I'd be living in a place so magnificent in such a short time. It's just 
just less than a year ago, I lived in one of those little brick ovens down in the middle of the city. Terribly hot and never got the chance to look at any trees. I guess off and on for 10 years. I really can't compare him to any other artist I know. I think he's pretty much of an individual and I'm sure he'll always remain that way. Bob finds a huge humanistic quality in what he's doing. Bob Hieronymus is based about finding reality his way, but about Bob is a terrific aura of kindness, a terrific gentility, if you will, of approach. A wonderfully sincere person. Uh, a wonderfully honest person. Uh, a thoroughly dedicated person to a unification of, of all of us. That is, he, well, more than most persons who talk about love, I think Bob, in his non-competitiveness, in, in his honesty, in his openness, in his appreciation of other people's gifts. Um, I mean, really, really is that loving person that we talk about too easily today. He has the very peculiar capacity of ignoring the ramifications of the art scene and the art market of being able to also operate on a very practical level. And it doesn't surprise me that he paints hands at the fair and that he paints cars and he paints walls. This is obviously all a part of his own development. It was a tradition handed down from family to family because the... Well, the way this house was put together is a very long story. About two years ago, we started to attend meditation and at these meditations, certain people used to come all the time. It's about 12 of those 70 people that would continuously come to these meditations that make up the members of this house today. Most of the other people that live here are from various occupations. One is a nurse, some are psychiatric aides, a shepherd type, one is a draftsman, another is a musician. Two of them are school teachers, and the age variance is from 19 to 35. We all got together through the meditations that were held at Johns Hopkins University several years back, and we have been working together trying to pull our information and the different talents of all the various individuals. It took quite a long time to find 12 different members of a group. Of a group that could work together very closely. And it's a little book called The Mystical Kabbalah. And it's the symbol of Virgo. The center that we've started here is a meditation center and a food center. Kind of like a place where people can get together and eat and at the same time learn something about what's going on in the occult world. There will be yoga classes, meditation classes, classes in astrology, and then later on I'll be teaching some classes in symbology. We're very much hung up on the gallery situation, on the art marketplace, on the kind of egocentric involvements that go along with any manufacturer presenting a particular product. I think that Bob is very much outside of this involvement this hang-up. He is much more interested in presenting his philosophic and religious point of view to the public. 
than he is with presenting the product as such. recognition or esteem so he is taking what is old but giving it to us and as a matter of fact though it's though it's been there for a long time for us to learn about and to prize relative to our culture it's new the more important the symbol the richer it is in meaning and the more highly developed the artist who works with the symbol the more he's aware of the diverse meaning of the symbol it's wealth of meaning and the various ways in which it can enter into our culture. So yes, Bob would use the same symbol in many different directions. Well, the Levering Hall mural, I don't think I ever saw an explanation of or heard a detailed explanation of. I wandered into it with Bob and here, there it is. And my first reaction to it was, wow and suddenly it's like being in the belly of a mural. Everywhere you look, there is a marvelous cacophony of color, form, line, and pattern interspersed with the Egyptian Sphinx, the Statue of Liberty going down in flames, the bull, the lion, the great seal of the United States, pyramids, flying saucers, the Milky Way galaxy, flags of many countries, myriad stars and comets, and angels and banks of clouds. You can have direct reaction, yes, but it's the after effect, the echo that really gets you. That's what catches up and grabs you in the back of the neck. The first approach, when you look at the art style, it's very simple art. It's very direct, the colors are dramatic. It's basically relatively simple. 
It's the meaning behind it that's so fantastic. That's what you have to wake up the following day and find out what did he really do here. That's what's important. Bob feels that for his work to be completely understood and appreciated, it's necessary to understand the symbolism. I think he's practical enough, though, to accept the fact that if people don't understand the symbolism, they can enjoy it purely visually and hopefully gain some intuitive or unconscious knowledge of the symbols. religion, the first thing they think about is the sun, the eagle of America is related to the sun in a strange kind of way which most people don't realize, that being that the sun usually blinds every other creature except one, that is the eagle. That's my belief that one of the reasons why the symbol for the United States of the Eagle is because he can look into the sun. The sun has always been used as a symbol for God. I graduated from Towson State College back in 1965 and decided I would teach a couple of years. After teaching for a couple of years, I found out that the system in the county that I taught in wasn't really doing very much and helping people understand, the, the students, so to speak, in the system, what their purpose was all about. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the few things we were not allowed to talk about. We couldn't talk about God or religion or purpose with any of the students. So I had to leave eventually. I had a painted car then, and it caused great, a great amount of anxiety to my administrator. I've always wished that I could somehow see the cars or things that I paint from a distance. Because it must be pretty interesting for someone just standing alongside of the road seeing a painted car go by with a message on it. Everything that I paint has a message and has a story. This car in particular I've had and driven and painted for the last four years it tells a story of the United States and the changes that are going on within it. Statue of Liberty is holding is a torch of light. Light has always been a symbol for love and wisdom. So we have here a symbol of our country, the upholder of love and wisdom. 
she has on her head a crown of seven points. And this crown of seven points is quite important because this seven points are symbols for seven stars that astronomers and astrologers believe have much to do with the evolution and revolution of this country. Those seven stars are called the Pleiades. Down the road from the large white house is an old stable, which we are going to convert into two facilities. One is the room that I'm walking in now, and that room is going to house the chapel of the liberal Catholic Church. There will be a mural in this room. It will be called the Shrine of St. Raphael. I've been working on this mural for about a year now. It's probably going to be one of the most complicated murals I've ever worked on. It probably takes longer. As a matter of fact, it may take me over two years to complete it. This mural, I hope, will be able to lift the vibrations of the... the in medieval thought is that the artist does have a unique message because of his spiritual development. His development isn't scientific development because there is a more profound development of the soul that comes through what I've called a metaphysical religious commitment and discipline. Now, Bob is in the 20th century, I think, a superb example of that ancient truth. Across from the Statue of Liberty, to her right, is the great bear. The great bear here is used as a symbol for Russia. The seven stars of the great bear represent symbolically the father, and the seven stars within the Pleiades represent the mother. When Russia, the great bear, joins together with America, the Pleiades, then a peace will be reached on this earth general theme of this entire building, then, is that Russia and America will unite. The Hermetic Axiom, as above, so below, is extremely important in all my work because one of the most important things in the Aquarian Age at the beginning is the second coming of Christ. As above, so below. As there is a Christ without, there is a Christ within. So most of my work is an example of this process as above, so below. And when I do a mural, such as the one at the Apocalypse of Johns Hopkins University, which has the second coming of Christ in it, in the book of Revelation, and also has within it a portal which is very important in the Christ, looking for the Christ within you. So this piece of work, also refers to looking for the Christ within. The great invocation tells the story of man looking within himself and finding Christ. There is the belief that, well, as Bob said it, as above, so below. This expression has been a dictum of occult philosophy. This is straight out of the metaphysics of transcendence as we've had it in the West. W what is above explains nature. You look at nature and, oh, if you only have eyes to see, then you can read in nature the symbols of the transcendent. Most people won't see that meaning. Because they cannot read the symbols. But what this kind of symbolic work does is it gets people interested in the kind of work you're doing. And then when they start to research your work, if they're interested enough, they find out these things gradually. Therefore, the meaning sticks within them. It also influences people unconsciously. 
most people are aware that their unconscious mind is far more important in most ways than their conscious mind. Teaching people on the unconscious level, gradually over a period of years, bears fruit. Bob has, I think, learned very early that what he's saying cannot be heard by everyone. It's hard to look beyond cozy, apparent, touchable reality. Bob is asking you to please look beyond apparent three-dimensional reality, to look into a psychic world, to look into ultimates. When I look at his work, I simply have a great feeling of overwhelming visual pleasure. I think it's completely joyous, sensually beautiful painting. But for me, what is most important, he is a living example of this ancient point of view of the artist as prophet. Well, that's the show for today, and I'm Dr. Bob Hieronymus, and we'll see you next time.